Isn't it amazing when you record 25 gigabytes of footage for an extra long video? And you realize that you used the wrong recording settings and everything looks either super dark or really washed out. Oh shit, not good. But then you put the videos in your editing program and the colors look normal again. And you realize that you had a heart attack for no reason at all. And then you decide to put this useless information inside of the video to bait your viewers to get 30 seconds of extra watch time. Bruh. Since the last video, I have added and reworked a lot of stuff in the game, so today I thought I would show you the process of that and also show you guys some things I learned. The first thing I did was plan in the underground part of the bunker, and you can see this very detailed sketch which very clearly shows all the parts. The first area you come to is like a reception, and I think I'll put some robot that just sits there and stares at you. And based on what items you have found or puzzles solved, you will be able to enter the other corridors. This upper area will be a storage room, and I think I will connect it to a shooting range, where you can practice against virtual enemies. This big room below will be the main area. Here the player will receive missions, and maybe gather information about the enemies, and prepare against them. I want to have lots of modularity, so I can reuse my assets to save time. So I made this tileable corridor model, that I hope to use a lot. I also designed these sliding doors, and I think I will use the same doors almost everywhere, except in areas where I need really thick doors for security or something. And here's how it looks when it's imported. I'm pretty happy with the overlook of it. I just need some more details and materials for it, of course. Okay, so with these walls, I created an actor blueprint, and you can see if I can select it, it's a bit hard. Uh, there is like a trigger box here. So if I play and I walk inside here, and I press a button, the door opens. But if I press a button when I'm outside, it doesn't work. Like that. So it's just a sliding sequence using a timeline. And it looks pretty cool still, but I will need to add some security feature for the front wall at least. Like a passcode or a scanner or something, or maybe a puzzle to get through. And also there's a door here for the elevator. It's a little bit big, I think. And then you get here into the elevator that doesn't actually exist yet. And you get another door. You walk through here. And here is a door that's a little bit different. And if you walk into here and you press the button, it opens the scanner. And the laser scan you. And if you are verified, you get to walk through. And if you want to go back from the other side, you don't need a laser, you just walk through. So if I start the lasers and I walk out right now, the door shouldn't open because I'm not there. Yeah, so it worked. And honestly, I feel like I put way too much time into making these lasers, but I really wanted them a specific way, like this, so it comes out and then it rotates and then it closes again. Uh, and it took quite a while, but it finally worked. So what happens is that I have if you can get close to this, there are, um, I think, 14 lasers, maybe? 13? Yeah, it's uneven because there's one in the middle that's not rotated. And you can see these are just tiny little uh, cylinders. And they have their origin exactly at uh, the top. So if I take this one, for example, uh, and I scale it on the x-axis, Oh, it's locked like this x-axis it will scale uh, just downwards so that's how the extension of it works i just undo this like that uh, and then these are attached to a rotator here which rotates all of them inside and uh, yeah so what happens is these are stored in an array and this array is only used for rotating the lasers. And the first thing that happens is that they extend. And that's just done here in initiate. And uh, this boolean is also called is doing sequence. So length and laser, it just uh, timeline here. It's 0.5 se seconds to extrude the, these lasers. <laughs> and the scale of them is just slurped here for each of them. Uh, also, 
after that is done, or not after, there's a delay here actually, and I'm not really sure why I did a delay, the, this code is pretty messy actually, but just a delay so I know how long it is maybe. After the, they are extruded, they are rotated, like uh, outwards to left and right, and how that is done is, I use a for each loop, and uh, this one, it's 0.75 seconds. <laughs> So I use this, and based on the array index, I map the index to their corresponding rotation. So they are 0 to 12. Uh, I'm not really sure if that's correct actually, but it works so. And there, that's mapped to uh, 110 and 70. So you can see that one that is 1. Uh, it will be mapped to... Uh, 110 I think 110 oh my god it's look so if I go in here oh it's so messy uh something like 110 you can see here and then I extrude it to something like 0.075 I think no 0.075 like this so it gets its rotation from that and uh, if it's uh, oops. if it's in the middle, then uh, the rotation will be right in between, and that will mean it's pointing right down uh, 90 degrees, I think. And that's about all I did with the bunker. Now I'll just take a quick moment to show you my Discord server. If anyone watching is interested in following the game a little bit closer, or test it, or share your own progress with your game. I also decided to change the exterior a little bit. I thought instead of having a floating island that looks a little bit out of place, I will have a bunker inside of a mountain. So I removed a lot of rocks on the bottom and also the foliage to make space for the new mountain, or the cliffside. I created a new and bigger landscape this time, because I don't think there's a way to resize an actual existing landscape in our engine. And something stupid I did was remove the old landscape without checking how I set up the material for it, which took a lot of struggling to figure out again. And when I finally got it working again, I stumbled upon this interesting glitch. With the landscape mostly done, I downloaded some nanite rocks from Quixel start working on the mountain. I fixed some gaps in the landscape and also used the visibility tool to hide some part of the landscape that we're hanging out to for. Then I just put rocks everywhere where it looked good, and started on the cliffside. I didn't have that many meshes, so I tried making it not so obvious that I was reusing the same meshes every time by putting them upside down and scaling a little bit. I also put a hole in the middle, which I think can become a place for ships or vehicles to stay. And since Nanite works with foliage now, I could get a lot of detail back while having good performance. And this is the final result of the modeling, or placing rocks, basically. So there is this cliffside wall, and you can still see it's quite repetitive with these ones, but if you're up here, I don't really think you're going to notice it ever, really. So yeah, and there's this cave or hole in the wall that will connect to the bunker, I think. So kind of like a place where ships can fly in and land. And there is also this fog uh, volumes. If I can select the one which is here, 
this one. So this just has a volumetric fog material on it. And you can see that I can move the fog down where I want it. So yeah. And also I add a little, more, a little bit more rocks up here. And also a passage that goes to another place. And this would be another area, which I won't be spoiling now. But if you ever play the game, you can see where it leads. <laughs> and uh, I really liked the wall here, where you could see through it. So I didn't want to remove it completely, so I just turned it into a cave, kind of, with a little bit of fog here. And it looks pretty good, actually. So in my last devlog I said I will show off the weapon system that I'm working on. And that's something I would be doing now. And I haven't come that far with it. Uh, there's line tracing and there's some... I don't know, it's not recoil, but the weapon goes back and forth and there's a little bit of spread in the weapon. And if you aim, the aiming is not uh, correctly done yet. But you can see here that the spread is a lot less. Like this. And yeah. And uh, that's kind of all there is to it right now. Not a lot, but it took a while. So it works like there's a gun base here. And this is the class that all the other weapons will inherit from. This one doesn't have anything in it. Just placeholders where you can select later. So there is the function for auto fire. And uh, I maybe will support other fire modes later, like burst or single shot, but uh, not right now. And there is this variable that decides the fire rate for it. And this function is called every time uh, you start shooting. And start shooting is called from the player blueprint. Uh, if I go in here, there is somewhere a left click shooting here. Uh, shoot and aim. And if you can shoot, then you go into the weapon where you have here and you get a child. And from that child, you call a function. So the last thing I want to show you guys is that you can see that there's a laser. So this is an attachment you can put on weapons later when I create an attachment system. Uh, so it uh, just points where you're aiming basically until it eventually reaches the center of the screen. I'm not really sure what distance is correct and if it really should go into the center of the screen or just straightforward because the gun is not pointing right into the center of the screen so it will not end up with the cursor I'm not really sure how that is done actually but uh, you can also see that uh, the a little red dot ends up on the weapon if you're too close and you also clip through here which is not, uh, not really supposed to happen but uh, yeah and how it works is actually pretty simple so there's just a line trace from the camera or uh, no it's not from the camera it's actually from the laser here so it goes from the laser position this is the start location and you go straight forward from the camera for 5000 units you can see here forward vector of the camera times 5000 and you start at the laser so it will end up in the center of the screen eventually and that just uh, depending on the distance of the line trace, uh, the scale of the weapon will be set to something. So it has scales this uh, like the lasers from before. Just yes, scales them like that. And yeah, and there is also this decal, which is probably a little bit too long, but uh, you will set the world location of it. To where the line trace hits so the red dot decal will end up wherever you're looking like this and one problem with uh, having a missive material like this which I don't really like is that you can see lumen does this thing where it illuminates basically because it's uh, the expected behavior but I want to turn it off somehow but I'm not really sure how and you can see, especially if I walk into a dark room here. Oh, it's not as much as I thought, but uh, before or sometimes, if I replay, maybe it's a glitch or something. Yeah, it needs to recalculate. You can see that there's these red spots everywhere. 
because it kind of approximates the global elimination but there's not really enough time or detail for it to do it well so it's just flickering red lights and I'm not really sure how I'm going to have an emissive material because I really want this bloom on it but uh, yeah kind of so that was basically it for the video thank you for watching the download and I hope you watch the next one